course, the place to the place to make sense of anything I might say over the course of our time together here is in your own experience. That's where I'm inviting you to look to explore this. Um, so from the perspective of the, the seemingly describable world, we're sitting, well, I'm sitting in, in a room and the room has a ceiling to it and a bottom to it, a floor to it and walls to it, right? It's circumscribed. It's got a top, a bottom. My experience, our experience has no top, no bottom, no walls, no sides. Feel that, feel how you cannot find a top or a bottom to your, your experience. Feel you, you're feeling that right now. The, the, the experience you're feeling right now has no bottom to it. It's not resting on anything. We could say it's just resting in more experience, but without a, a bottom to it. It's rather a striking difference. In the, in the seemingly describable world, there are insides and outsides. There is an inside and an outside. There's what's inside of me and what's outside of me, inside of the body, outside of the body, for example, right? But in experience, you don't find inside or outside, do you? There's nothing outside of your experience. Nothing, there's no inside in relationship to outside either, right? There's no outside to your experience, right? There's just experience. You'll never get outside of it. Those categories don't even compute from the experiential perspective, inside and outside. In the described world, there's an individual, me, existing in a world separate from the world in some sense, navigating this world that is not me, right? Feel your experience, feel experience, and you do not find an individual and a world. You find experience. And even if you say, well, no, there's an experience of an individual, and then there's an experience of the world. But as experience, you don't feel, you don't find an edge to the experience of you, a kind of a stopping point, a gap, and then the world, or like some sort of demarcation between the two seeming experiences, self and world you find a continuum of experiencing, don't you? You don't find, you're not experiencing an individual and a world right now. You're experiencing a continuum of, cannot say really, but just feel that the seamless nature of the experiential field. That's very distinct from the concept of being an individual living in a world, navigating a world.
really feel that perspective. Let yourself enjoy that perspective of no boundary, no lines, no seams in the fabric of experience, seamless. You never reach the end of it. In the seemingly describable world, there's time. There's what was the past. What is the present and what may be the future. But this is all conceived. Again, I'm not saying it doesn't exist in some sense. It can certainly be experienced uh, in a sense as a flow of time, past, present, future, that we split up into past, present, and future. Of course, even if we take that as a reality of some sorts, that we've divided up the timeline into past, present, and future, at what point along the timeline, let's just even give that some, it's due, the timeline for a moment. At what point does the so-called past end and the present begin and the present end and the future begin? We can use those designations to describe and talk about the nature of things, but experientially, there's no, there's no gaps. There's no, it's a continuum, the flow of time, even if we, say there's a flow of time. In that sense, the categories of past, present, and future, you can just throw them out because you're talking about something that can't be found as discrete from something else. So at what point does this moment, what we call the moment, become the future? <laughs> right now, <laughs> in the very instant, it becomes the future. <laughs> And what became the future instantly becomes the past in the moment that it becomes the future. I mean, that sounds like a crazy talk, but it's actually what you're experiencing. We have some sense of the moment, you know, be in the moment we hear teachings talk about. Okay. So feel experientially now like this instant like real time not what was not what might be but right now this instant this pinpoint of flash instant feel that how small is that pinpoint how long is the pinpoint here for it's not graspable is it it's just absolutely like it has no duration If you think of time as we conceive of time kind of moving along, right? This timeline, and it's like a train coming, 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 like, and then when it reaches like me, it will let the moment will have arrived. And then here's the present moment that I experience. And it's like, but the dynamism of what's here experientially, feeling the dynamism, the aliveness of this moment, it's like the the train never actually arrives because the train of now never arrives because it's moving. And so we could talk about it. We could talk about it being kind of, oh, the moment freezes in time such that I can talk about it and name it and describe it and hold on to it. But it's actually the, like the train, you're there, you're on the tracks and the arrival of the train is the departure of the train, isn't it? So is a moment arriving or departing? 
feel that. You cannot say, can you? It's both, isn't it? Which logically speaking makes no sense, but again, we can feel the reality of both arriving and departing simultaneously. In that sense, there's no, there's no moment. Conceptually, we imagine, conceive of a past that has led up to and somehow preceded and contributed to or caused the present moment, right? Experientially, we don't find a past at all that has led up to this moment. You don't find that in your experience. You cannot find what preceded <laughs> now because it's always just a flash. Where do you find what preceded it, except in memory? But that's conceptual. There's just this flash, just here, without any beginning, seem, any findable beginning, or cause, or precedent. In that sense, the, what's here has no, the his, there's no history to what's here. It's absolutely, it stands on its own. It's free of history. So again, we have these concepts of time that in the described world, in the experienced world, it's completely bizarre, like what time even is, if there even is time, if there even is a moment, if there even is duration to anything. It's so slippery experientially, just vanishing, 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 yet paradoxically always here, always arriving, always departing, always arriving, always departing. But Again, it's beyond description. Beyond time. Conceptually, we also have a sense of space. I'm here, spatially speaking, and then something's over there. That's the sense of space, right? The distance between here and there, and the space between here and you know, the refrigerator's over there, and I'm here. Experientially, there's no here and there, <laughs> is there? Well, where does here end and there begin? Where does there end and here begin? It's seamless in that sense. Experientially, there's no space, spaceless, locationless. Where are you right now? You can only place yourself spatially in reference to something else, right? I'm here as opposed to somewhere else. So uh, here I am localized here. This is all conceptual. Experientially, you don't find location because there's only here. There's no there. Like I said, you can never get outside of experience. You can never get outside of here because experience is always here. It's not there. There is no there <laughs> in experience, right? Not that you can experience, you can conceive of a there that's somehow outside of your experience, but you can't ever experience it. So experience is uh, like a closed system that you can't get out of. You can't escape here. You can't escape experience. And yet um, it's an open-ended system at the same time because, as I was saying at the outset, it has no um, uh, wall around it. It has no edge to it. So it's beyond space and time experientially. In the described world, there are people, places, things, circumstances, events that seem to endure and have some kind of uh, object permanence to them, right? Like you've, you've encountered these Zoom calls before if you have, or you've met me or seen me, let's say, uh, obviously other things in your life, your home, your friends, your family. And so there's this familiarity 
based on knowledge, remembered knowledge in a sense. Again, it's a very real perspective that we experience. There's, you know, if we recognize familiar people, places, and things, don't we? But experientially, there's no permanence. There are no things that, that endure over time. You could look at me and say, I've seen him before, if you have. And so there's, again, there's this familiarity, but as you, the perception that you're having of the object, the visual object of me on your screen is dynamic and it's changing in every instant. It has no permanence. So, so the moment of experiencing is, as I say, the shape of the moment has no shape. It's uh, constantly shaping, we could say, <laughs> but it never really takes shape. So it has no, nothing has any permanence or endurance, experientially speaking. The moment is that ungraspable. So all the concepts that ensue from that perspective, that to seemingly describable world of being an individual, navigating a complex world, at times, maybe much of the time, or at least some of the time, struggling to make sense of the world and, and not be overwhelmed by it, keep ourselves safe from the potential slings and arrows of misfortune, and uh, including old age and death, and on and on and on and on, and finding happiness and well-being, and securing this, that, and the other thing, and um, From the experiential perspective, that world is not what's being, it's not what's being experienced. I'm not experiencing an individual navigating a world. I'm experiencing a flow of experiencing that has no boundary, no edges, no clear lines of demarcation and delineation and separation. And so, you know, to put a point on this whole exploration, from the perspective of the described, the seemingly describable world, I'm an individual trying to find something, if I am. There's something to find, something to locate, something to understand, something to realize, and someone to realize it, someone to find it, and be, be fulfilled by it, and so on or something to not be overwhelmed by or not be troubled by or not be overtaken by or victimized by or on and on. And then from the experiential perspective, none of that actually exists. None of that can be found. You do not feel that you do not, as I said before, you don't find an individual navigating a world. You find a flow of experiencing open-ended, boundless, seamless, ultimately indescribable because you cannot actually think about this moment. I mean, try right now to think about this moment, to conceive this moment. And that which you attempt to think about or conceive is gone. The instant there's an attempt to think about it, it's no longer here. It's why this is unthinkable. Reality is unthinkable from, from this vantage. And so the, the idea of being an individual that's missing something and then goes on a search for that and tries to find that thing somewhere, that just doesn't compute from the experiential perspective. There's no one looking for anything right now. No one missing something. There's the absolute boundless reality of experiencing, absolutely infinite in the sense of having no end, no conclusion, no bottom.
And it's a fullness beyond measure, the fullness of everything. And whatever we imagine ourselves to be is that. Of course, there's no separation. There's just this wholeness. No top, no bottom. No inside, no outside. No here, no there. No before, no after. Always here. The very experiential basis of every instant is this fathomless, boundless indescribability, indivisibility. <clears throat> 